My name is Marissa Promacio, and I've been going to VOSD um, Easter of 2011. I have always dreamed about being a mother. Um, at a very, very young age, I wanted a lot of children. And um, so as, we, as I met Brian and we got married, um, it was always a dream of ours to become parents. When we got married in 2014, um, we knew that we wanted children. Um, but we wanted to wait at least a good five years just to enjoy each other and um, explore and, and do new things together. Um, but in 2015, um, early 2015, uh, Brian actually got sick, really sick, um, where he ended up in the hospital and um, he ended up getting a pretty big diagnosis. Um, he had a kidney failure and so that led to um, a round of some chemotherapy at that time. Um, for six months. So the chemotherapy um, would affect um, fertility for the future. Um, when they told us at the time, you know, it didn't really have a, a negative effect on us. I think we just wanted, you know, my husband to be healthy. I remember just thinking like, whatever it takes to keep him alive, whatever it takes. Um, and um, it, it was a six month treatment. And so, um, you know, this, the chemotherapy definitely helped. His kidneys were able to um, function, you know, back to their, to uh, 100%, which is what we wanted. And so we're just, you know, that alone was a miracle. We began to talk about uh, potentially having children. You know, it, it wasn't happening naturally for us. Um, we knew it was going to be a struggle. And I remember, um, telling him like you know I think we should seek help you know from a doctor we should go to a doctor see what they can do um, in my mind I had an idea of what that would look like but I really didn't know really didn't know um, the journey that we were about to go on in 2019 you know we we saw some doctors and we began some treatment and we had um, three failed attempts and I remember going back and saying, God, like, okay, what's next? What's next for us, God? And um, what, what do you want me to do? What do you want Brian to do? Come October 2019, um, I had just gotten, um, just went to the doctor to get treatment. And long and behold, um, Pastor De uh, Matthew Thompson, he comes and it was toward the end and he calls out, um, the women who have been believing for a child. It was so specific, I remember. And at this time, you know, I didn't really tell very many people what was, what was happening with us. Um, close friends knew that we were trying. They knew that we were going to the doctors. But that was it. You know, I, I had not announced it publicly. It wasn't something that I talked about. He calls us to go to the altar he wanted to pray. He wanted to pray over us. And um, at first I didn't go. <laughs> I stayed at my seat and I was like, nope, I am not going to go up there. Because um, if I go up there, everyone's going to know. Everyone's going to know that, I'm, that I've been trying or that I am trying. And it was just, it was already hard because of the losses that I had. And I had just had treatment like the day before that. And I was believing, I was, and I was, I went there believing that I was pregnant, you know, that I was believing that this was it for me. And so I was like, hesitant to go up there. My husband comes up to me and he's like, I think we should go. I think we should go up to the altar. And so we did, you know, God really stretched our faith that day to take that step to go up there. And, um, he prophesied over us that we were going to have a baby that God, you know, was going to fulfill his promise and give us what we went up there for. And so that's kind of where we began to take a turn. And this was early of 2020. So then the pandemic happened. And during that time, um, all treatment had stopped, which was really hard as well, because, you know, you feel like you're, you're you have a momentum going and then everything shuts down, including treatment, um, especially fertility treatment, because it wasn't something that um, was like necessary. It was optional. It was considered like some sort of optional treatment. 
So we had, we were forced to take a pause. So during that forced pause because of the pandemic, um, again, we went back to the drawing board with, with the Lord and just praying and, um, uh, the knock at midnights began, and I remember attending the knock at midnights with Sister Georgina, and this was a time to just pray and believe for miracles. This was a the time. There were special breakouts specifically for women who were trying to conceive, and so I remember joining um, those breakouts, you know, with other women, and we were all believing, and we would share scripture, and we would pray for one another. And so I took that, that pot, that medical pause, and I, I just pressed in um, with God. And uh, we were very excited, and we really felt like this was our time. We felt like this was it, you know. And so in 2020, uh, January of 2021, uh, we transferred our first embryo, and it failed. And so at that time, you know, we, we were very, very confused. We felt a lot of confusion, um, sadness. I had felt like everything was set up for this moment, you know, and and that God had set up everything and that this was going to be it. And um, and it failed. And so it was really hard. But I did not, you know, lose all hope. I mean, I had my moment, but I remember coming back to, you know, and praying to the Lord and just reminding him, reminding him of what he what he promised, you know, reminding him of that, the prophecy, and, and reminding him of um, of scripture, you know, and and the scripture that I was that I would hold on to, and you know, letting the Lord know, God, you promised us, you know, this, this miracle, and in March, um, we tried again, 2021, and we transferred our second embryo, and um, long and behold, you know, the Lord kept His promise in March, and I got pregnant with our baby boy, Benjamin Bryan. So this process has really changed us, you know. Um, this whole journey has changed us. It has um, taught us really um, who God is, um, even deeper, you know, God the Father, God our provider, God our healer, um, God our Prince of Peace. And um, it has really, you know, allowed us to just let go, let go of our agenda, let go of our, of, um, our, our schedule, letting go of um, even how we think something should go. You know, we, we have this idea sometimes of how we want a specific journey to go and the steps that, um, that are, you know, that are to take place. And, you know, um, this process has really allowed us to just let go and let God. It has taught us that um, God has his own way of, of unfolding miracles. Um, you know, God has written out our story the way He intended it to be told. And so um, through this process, you know, we were really um, able just to draw closer. You know, our faith has elevated because um, we're able to to see and hold what, what God um, has promised. Faith is believing without evidence, but we're blessed enough to have the evidence. For anyone who is still waiting for the miracle to happen, I just want to encourage you to not lose hope. Continue to trust in the Lord and the process. Surround yourself with people who are going to pray for you and lift you up because God is a miracle-working God.